gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 11, starting at verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you have were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Amen. You may be seated. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Who wants to think a second what it means to care for somebody? Because caring for someone, it certainly doesn't stop that you want to care about somebody. Caring for somebody is that step where you are willing to take action on behalf of others. It's not good enough to just say, well, you know, I, I really care about that person. But yet you never go and do anything for that person. You never act upon that sentiment. The reality about care is that you really you want to provide for them. You want to make sure that they have the best. You want to make sure that they learn the right lessons. You want to make sure that they don't make some of the same mistakes you do. Amen? I mean, if you really care about someone, do you want them making the same mistakes you did? Because you remember what it was like making those mistakes, right? And you remember how crummy you felt and how bad the circumstances were. And so part of care is trying to make sure that the people you love don't have to experience those same things. I think when you care for someone, there's a natural tendency to want to, to teach them, to guide them. You want to nurture them. When they're tired, you want to help them rest. When they're hungry, you want to feed them. Because you care about their well-being. You know, the scripture there in Matthew 11, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You know, Jesus' point is about an invitation. Do you hear it? When he says, let me teach you, I think what he's really saying is, come into my care and guidance. Let me help teach you. Let me care for you and protect you. Let me guide you in each and every step of the way. You see, there is an action that takes place. And it's an invitation. So that means you have to do your part too. You have to be willing to accept Jesus' invitation. Amen? Amen? You see, the one thing that Jesus gives us, I don't know if you ever heard the expression of agape, the word agape, agape love. In Greek, there's several different words that describe love. For example, there's a word for love between brother and sister. There's a word between love for more of a sexual sense of love. And then there's agape love. That is the greatest of all types of love. It is a sacrificial love. It is a willingness to do whatever is necessary for the benefit of others. It is unconditional. It does not act with the hope of return. No, no. It is that unconditional, sacrificial love that everything will be given for the benefit of others. And that is exactly what Jesus did here on earth. With his death on the cross, he gave everything so that we would have a chance. See, that's how much God cares for you. He cares for everybody. But I remind you again about accepting that invitation. So let's talk a little bit today about how God takes care of us. Let's prepare ourselves. We pray with you, please. Oh God, oh God, open my heart and my mind, 
Open my heart and my mind. So I can hear your word. So I can hear your word. And know your will for my life. And then give me the courage to go from this place and live it. Amen. You know, the lesson today is, is focused out of Psalm. Um, and I want to start here with this. I mean, the Psalms are written in the Old Testament. And the Psalms are meant oftentimes to be sung. And in the Hebrew, the flow of the Psalms sometimes is a little bit smoother and a little nicer. Because they were teaching moments. They were, you memorize them so that you would learn the words and understand the words. In verse 6 there, Psalm 1, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. You see, God knows our hearts, and he knows those that have chosen him. And he is so faithful to us. And when we look at that and we think about the place that God has for us, that should bring a nice, warm feeling to us. You see, God is going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. First and foremost, when you adhere to his word. You see, we have to bring something. It's not just about God doing everything. It's about us accepting that invitation and walking to them. Look at the first verse of the psalm. Blessed is the one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, stand in the way of sinners, say, or sit in the company of mockers. You see, within the psalm, you get the message that there are certain things out there that are not good for you. There are things that you need to try to avoid. But think about this. Everything else is open. Everything else is open in God's love. You can operate and move that way. Do not walk in step with the wicked. See, our actions need to be pleasing to God. They need to be going into what God's standards are. Not walking with those that are doing evil things. Stand in the way that sinners take. Those people who are committing sin, our ways are not to be that way. We are not to stand there and be a part of that and allow that to go on. And not to sit in the company of mockers. People that are going to sit around and poo-poo on what God is trying to do. They're going to mock and make fun of them. You remember the people that were mocking Jesus as he was on the cross. If we avoid those three things, we are truly blessed because we will be walking in a positive light. See, adhering into God's word means that God is going to be taking care of us. And see, God will take care of you also when you delight in the, his law. See, for the Old Testament, this is why it's in the Psalms it's important to understand, it is about the law. It is about God's standards. How do you delight in laws? Are you kidding me? I spent my whole teaching career telling kids we have too many laws. But think about what God's laws are. There's not 10 million of them. No. But they are very specific. And they are designed to protect us. And when we live into those standards, are we going to sin? Think about the Ten Commandments. You go through the Ten Commandments and you think about what's there. If you follow the Ten Commandments, are you ever going to end up in something bad? Not coveting what your neighbor has. If you're not worried about what your neighbor's had, and you stay focused on God, then are you going to ever run into this idea of jealousy? No. Because you've already received the promise. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Well, if you don't do those things, are you going to break the law? No. And you're going to find yourself in a great place. See, we can delight in God's laws because God's laws are there to keep us safe. For all of us that have had children, or see children, or we watch children, or we've taught children in any way, you establish rules, right? Why do you establish rules? Are the rules for your benefit? Or are they the benefit and protection of the children? Why do you tell your kids, don't touch the stove? Because if they touch the stove, they're going to get burned. And we care about them. We want to keep them safe. God's standards and God's laws 
are meant to protect us, to keep us safe, to keep us from doing things that are going to do us spiritual harm, physical harm, emotional harm, and to keep us living in joy. That's why we can take joy in all circumstances, because we're not going the wrong direction. We're not finding ourselves going the wrong way. We find ourselves focused on God and moving to God. And we can delight in his laws because it keeps us from harm. And you see, the other thing, God will take care of you. Sorry, once again, I get excited. I jump ahead, I pause. The second verse there, delight in the laws and who meditates on his law day and night. Uh, I do need to speak about that point. Do you carry around your Bible everywhere you go? It's okay. So what does it mean to meditate on his law day and night? How do you do that? You've read scripture. You've studied scripture. What the, what the psalm is telling us is that in everything that we do, we take God with us. See, when you leave these doors here today, you don't leave God in here. Amen? You take God with you. Everything that you do, everything you're about to say, every action that you're going to take from Monday to Sunday, you take God with you. When you leave one place and you go to another, you pray, God, come with me. Guide me. Guide my words. Guide my actions. When you go to the store, you never know who you're going to run into. But you're focused on God, meditating on what God is calling you to do, how he's calling you to live. Helps you be prepared when you have those interactions. That's what it means to meditate on his words and on his laws day and night. Keeps your heart and your mind in the right focus. And I would tell you, I, I, didn't, I didn't really learn that until at least halfway through my teaching. That every day for every class, I needed to refocus and think of Jesus to prepare me for the next set of kids, for the next set of problems that I'm, I'm going to deal with. To make sure that my words stay focused and they don't get caught up into stuff that is not meaningful. So God will also care for you when you trust his providence. It is with your whole heart. It was with everything that you trust his providence. So what do we mean by providence? What we mean is God's protective care. See, you have to trust, especially when things start to get shaky, especially when things don't seem to go, especially when it seems like God hasn't answered that prayer yet. You have to continue to trust. You've got thousands of years of history and testimony from people who have trusted God's providence and have been delivered to salvation. It's not, remember, your finish line is not here on earth. Your finish line is as you cross over to heaven with Jesus. And so everything that we go through here, all the obstacles, we have to trust God's providence, that he will take care of us. That God's will, God's perfect will, is what will happen. Look at verse 3. That person. So this is referring back to the first verse where it says, blessed is the one. Okay? That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I'll go back to you again for three weeks talking to kids about Joseph. The ups and downs of Joseph's life. To be sold into slavery, to be the head of the household and taking care of them, to be wrongly accused, to be thrown in jail, to be left in jail, then to be raised to the power of in charge of all Egypt. You see, the person that adheres to God's word, the person that delights in that law and that trusts his providence, stays connected to the power of God. You stay protected. You stay connected to that living stream. Does anyone here ever feel exhausted from doing too much stuff? Just things just seem to be just, it's just, oh, it's exhausting. It's one thing after another. Sometimes you have to step back and say, am I doing this on my own power or am I doing it with God? Because God will give you the strength to do what you need to do. He will give you the strength to get through those tough times. 
Because you, you're like that tree. You're right next to that stream, that living, that breathing power that God gives us. And what happens? You're going to yield fruit in season. Whenever the circumstances come, when you stay connected to God, you will bear fruit. Your actions will bear fruit. And that is a true blessing. And whose leaf does not wither. That's the point. That it's not your strength. It's on God's strength. And it will happen. And it will be good. And you won't wither away. God will give you time to rest. Whatever they do prospers. Those that are seeking God's will, adhering to his law, delighting and trusting in God, they will prosper. Be very careful. It's not necessarily prospering by the world's standards. But that happens. verse from Matthew 6. And I think it sums up the point very well. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. This is part of Jesus' teaching to us. And it speaks directly to what they talk about in the Psalms, about how God's care is there for all of us. Seek him, seek his ways, seek his standards. So it means by living righteously, by doing what is right, by doing what is good in God's eyes, standing up in tough times, dealing with those challenges, being humble enough to not worry about it being your way. When we seek God, we're moving with God's love. And that is a blessing that the world desperately needs. Holy Heavenly Father, Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for being in our life, and we give you thanks, Lord, for never moving away from us. Help us each day, Lord, each moment, to keep you in our hearts as Lord of our life, to keep you in our minds, to seek your way, to have you at the tip of our tongue to guide our words. Lord God, let us live with joy in knowing that no matter what problem we face, no matter what obstacle we have, we take comfort in your love. Help us to seek that embrace and that warmth.